Alrighty, so I just asked out on Discord, and so I asked if you want a different video for my example of Dev Zero, and you all said yeah. So this is what this is. Uh, the first thing, and just I've gone over some of this already, so it's just clarification, right? So the first part of this is just demonstration of your local dev environment. And I think somebody asked me, would I give more detail here? And I'm not really going to, but just know that I wouldn't throw something that you haven't done at least three times in both in as a combination of in the Udemy course and in our code, our learn togethers. Okay, so it's not going to be anything big, but I will say do this, accomplish this, and then I want to see you create, do the basic get workflow right so i'll give you create you know the details to create it in here have your code do this make sure it runs without an error should only take i think around 10 minutes of our 30 minute sessions now what that means is i have scheduled 30 minutes for each session um so i show you that in a little bit okay so as i was coding up my example today um, I went over this and I'm like, okay, variables, converts, getting input, flow control. Um, I ended up doing range for loops, which is cool. I did while if I actually ended up doing all these functions, I ended up doing a uh, third party and my own uh, returning. Oh, I do need to do default values. I could totally do that. I did try except I, I'm kind of flexible on try actually while I think it's else and uh, finally here but I did do try and accept so uh, I can easily do actually try uh, accept and else and then list now list here I didn't give any detail I did end up using creating one storing data in that and then using a method called count to give me some data back okay so before I go over my code, just to be clear, you know, and you might wonder, well, what happens when you come to a code review? What happens is the first thing we do is we go through the first part of this, right? So that will be the first thing. And then hopefully, again, it should be fairly simple. It's just me seeing that you have the environment set up, you understand the Git workflow, That's and that should just be now standard. So once we do that, then we actually have you run your code. Now I will also have your code on my system. But remember, if you're in need of extra help, that's fine to come uh, and schedule time with me, but that is not a code review, okay? In order for you to do a code review, you have to be, you have to be bringing me, I would say code that works. Now I am willing to grade work with that have, might have minor issues, but it will be discounted right so but it does lose points okay uh if you don't do a code review at all 50 percent off for that i have had i think one student not do that in the past not this semester and then this is what i was talking about with bringing me code that works and then this is what will happen right so during the actual code review of this uh, again, this is the bulk of the points. You'll actually, will run your code, you'll walk me through it, and then we'll talk about, right, you'll walk me through your code. And here's the thing, the, the code here intended to be your own code, right? If you do get inspired, and obviously if you, not obviously, but if you do use somebody else's code, you definitely need to note that reference okay so for my program i wrote all the code myself okay i will have the schedule probably released i'm going to release the schedule but i just show it to you right now in a moment we'll release this schedule because this is going to be for both my javascript class and you guys but just to be clear on the calendar part of this right so let me actually take off 15 and add 95 so for us, our dev zero falls on a Thursday night. And so I have sessions starting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? And then two on Friday. But to be clear, right, the sooner you come see me, right, the better. That means you've actually worked on the code. The sooner you come see me, the more opportunity if you have something that's not quite 
there and you want to fix, you can do that. And what often happens is that these code review sessions become tutorial sessions, but I would really like to say it's okay to do tutorial sessions with me. Just try to do it outside of the schedule, which might get a little challenging. So I'll come back to that in a minute. So here's the deal. If you wait until the night it's due, I do have some in the afternoon for that. The only evening I have is, is Wednesday night, which is my normal office hour. So if you end up submitting it here, I do have a couple Friday. And then the following week is just my normal office hours for you to come see me. But you will have until the following week. Now, and be clear about this. Once you, you do have to submit that code here at the 17th, you have until this date. Now, again, this will be when my normal office hour ends. Again, reach out to me. If you can't work that out, I'll do my best to work with you around that. Okay. So you have until here, if you don't do it here, then you can still do it, but it is 25% off. No matter what you get, it starts with a discount of 25% off. So don't put yourself in that situation. Now, again, I'm not going to release this formally, but you can kind of see what will happen is when I release this, I'll give you a link to it and you can just put your name in here. You can see Monday, I have them from 2 running until 2.30, Tuesday 2 until 4, Wednesday 5 until 7.30, Thursday 1 until 3, and Friday 1 to 2. And here is my Zoom link. Okay, so... I want to give both of my classes, my JavaScript and my um, Python students, a, a, the, ex the exact moment of having that release for them to look at it. But I am going to prep everybody this week saying what that is so they can think about like what times they would want. Okay. Now, for the code itself, let me show you my example. Uh, like I said, I even said you only have to do 90% of this. So I definitely know I got 90% more than that. But so let me switch over to VS Code. First thing let me do is just run my, um, and by the way, I, I've seen this before, but you know, this, oh, who, please somebody who, who told me about this, tell me who that is so I can give you credit each time I use it. CD changing into a directory is great, but knowing how to do it from VS Code, I think even better. Oh, before I show you this, I am going to also release my code out on public called dev example dev zero. So that if you want to take a look at my code, you're welcome to after what I've shown you today. But also know that it, this code needs to go into your private under a directory called dev under also create inside of their dev underscore zero and then put your code in there. Okay, so um, I'm going to call RPS is an eight rock scissors paper. So the first thing I give is a user menu because what happens in my game, I can show you the documentation a little bit after I'm done, is they can either end the game, don't play, or they can game, game plays, so the code plays or the human plays. So let's start with human plays, or actually let's start with that if I do something outside of this, throws an error, and it says invalid input, it doesn't like that, Right, so if I just do that, also the same thing. So let's do human play. So in this case, the first thing it asks for is actually the player name, which I, as I'm seeing this, I think I'll add a little space there. So I'll say my name. And then you get another menu list, right? So you can either stop playing, you can choose rock, scissors, paper here. So if I choose rock, and then it shows rock beats scissors because the computer chose scissors, players wins. If I do rock again, it's a tie. I do rock again, right? So the other thing I'm doing is outputting uh, just the array um, or list uh, in this case. And But you can keep playing, play as long as you want, as many times. Now, if you do hit four, then of course it throws an error. Uh, if you do hit something here, it throws an error. You only have choices one through three, so it captures for all that. And now if I want to stop playing, what will happen here is it'll say uh, total game five uh, were played and only one was one, which I think that's right, right? I'm going to go back up. <laughs> I want to go up. 
yeah, so there was only one win. Right, so now what this does is it takes me back to the um, main menu idea. And so here, if I want to play gameplay, uh, what it does there, uh, it's interesting, it hasn't normally done that one. Let me do gameplay again. So in this case, I randomly select the number of games to play, and then I generate both the game choice and the uh, player player choice and the game choice, and then just run that. And I'll show you the code for that in a second. And then if I hit O for out, then it just says have a great day. Okay. So um, what I like to do is when I show code, so first, that's the first thing in a code review is we just have you run your code. You would explain it to me. It would make sure it runs without error. Um, in this case, of course, I'm going to throw you some input that wouldn't make sense. I would say try this, or I will do it on my side as well. Okay. So when I do a code or uh, look, look at code, I generally, for me, because it's the way I write it, I start from the bottom because I do what's called a bottom up uh, programming style. So my main block for handling the user input uh, is a while, um, a while block, a while loop. And so I set gameplay as true as a global variable. Then I just do, this just adds an additional line. And then I call a function, get user input. This is something I've done before. I do add uh, empty lines between each of them, but I'll show you my get user input up here because of course that gets called several times. So get user input, it's actually towards the top, there it is. So I do my try accept here. Uh, I convert whatever they input uh, into an integer and then throw that exception if there is it needs to be a numeric value. I could do some more error checking here for sure, but this at least gives me that uh, beginning basic start, okay? Okay, I come down here. Um, if user zero, set gameplay to false, right? Um, which in this case, in, you know, it's going to fall through the logic and then come back up here because uh, it's not going to meet any of the other conditions. And then I'll just stop playing and then throw the last message. So these are, of course, the important one. If the, if the user selects games to put gameplay or user plays. So um, I'm going to go to user play because it's kind of the one that probably is the one that you'll probably do. You may do both and you can totally run my code. Uh, and I could have done a, I did kind of a similar thing here where I set a value, a Boolean value. I asked for the input for the username. And this is one thing I kind of did at the end. So I think one thing I will do here is do a little more error checking uh, here, a little try, even, even though I don't really care what they give me for name, it's still good to do. So then I say while RPS is true, then um, I, and I did a couple of nested functions here. So I said get user input and I'm using that same function. That's why I like to write that function. And I'm passing it as string for showing the user. And then what I do is I actually, whatever comes back from that, right? So it's running get user input, the same one I did before. When it comes back after getting the user uh, input, converting it, I actually pass that to determine the RPS string. And the reason I do that is the user, it's just easier to capture, uh, you know, if the user's hitting one, two, or three versus them trying to type in rock. Just straightforward. I just limited what they could do. So up here on determine, this was a pretty easy one too. Um, where I just said determine RPS selection. I had selection come in. I had returned a string based on that. And then if it was zero, I returned not, uh, done. And then this is where I returned error. And this is where I realized uh, like I could handle that as well with a try exception. So then whatever comes back from that would be my player choice. And then I think that's where I'm at. Yeah, so player choice equals done, then I say no. If if player choice is equal to none, then I just show stats because I assume they've played a couple times. They may not have. I output their name. I set that to false, and I just hit continue. 
If there's an error, now this is the key, if there's an error, I don't throw RPS is equal to false because they may want to play again. They may have just accidentally hit something. Otherwise, this is the code that runs if their input was good. So now I do code choice, um, determine RPS. This is where I, oh yeah. So actually, no, sorry, I messed up. Use player, user players. Oh no. So what I do here is I actually from, and I imported ran, uh, random. So again, I use somebody else's code for that, but it's as part of the standard library. You see this here at the top where I just imported random. Okay, and so when I did that, then come back down here. It's funny, when you sometimes it's good to look at your own code and try to remember what you did. So uh, I select the randoms uh, number between one and three. And we have to do four in order for it to uh, pick because it will stop at that before that number. And then I get game results. So I, I say determine the choice for the, for the code because the player has already chosen their rock, scissors, paper, right? I already got that player choice right here. And then what I do is I call determine RPS by actually passing it the player choice and the code choice. Uh, and that's, of course, where the logic for rock, scissors, paper happens. So if I scroll up here, um, and I, the first part of the reason I, I uh, changed that too is that it's like if you're reading it, it just kind of makes you can more read it readable. So player choice equal to game choice. If it's true that they're equal, it's a tie. So I just say games, and this is a global um, list that I set up and I just appended tie, and then I return the string tie. Okay, and then of course I check to see if it's rock. And then if it's also, if it's rock and, you know, if it's sweet scissors, then we append with the wind else and we just check the other because if it's not scissors then it's paper right so then this is a string and then you just continue down each one of those branches so i have if a nested if and an else to do the logic now i know there's more efficient ways to write this but i just did it based on my own like without really looking the only thing i think i had to look up was append because i know there's different ways to append the, and again, this is my global uh, array for that, okay? Now, uh, once I do that, once I do that, come back down here to use or play. Yep, here we go. So once I determine that, and then I print out the game results, which is, um, and then I do print games, right? So the game result is coming back. This is just the string that comes back. Uh, and then I just printed out the ver uh, the array, the list, so you could see what that was. And I could probably throw that out, but it's kind of fun to see it in there. So then if the user chooses uh, done, then it comes back, of course, to here, and then they can choose again. So let's, let's assume the game play, the game plays, all right? So in this case, I'd selected a random number between one and 10. Uh, so, and then for, and this is where I use range. And I said, starting at one, uh, go to whatever that random selection is. And then I, in this case, because it's not a user selected, I said game choice one, game choice two. So it's the computer playing itself. And then I got the results. And again, utilizing the functions I've already written, um, and then printing, as a matter of fact, the one thing you start to look at is like, oh, you know what, where have I seen this code before? And can I create a function that just does some of this? Because I've written this, these three same lines here that get the result, that uh, game results, I print them and then I do print the games. So stuff like that, you kind of have to go, is it worth it? Uh, you have to determine if it's easy to put it into a function. So once I'm through, and this was true on the user input, then I just ran show stats. And show stats was very simple. I actually may want to do a little more work to this. And show stats right here. I just, and by the way, because I'm referencing games out on the global, um, I did that. 
because I'm going to update it here because once I do the statistics and I go back to the main menu, I want that games uh, list cleared so I can use it again. And you could make an argument for doing it for a different, you know, if you, if you had a player name captured in your gameplay, you could do that. But in this case, I just said uh, called length on games and uh, converted a string. So I could say total games played and the player won. Now, in this case, because of the computer playing, I just assumed the first one was the player, but I could do a better job there as well. And then I just did games.count uh, and I had it count for that entry. Okay, so that's my code. Um, again, I think... I more than met 90% of it, but I still have some things. And this is a very normal thing to do is to write code, and especially once you, and, and I'm telling you, it is good to practice with other people. This is kind of what I'm doing in a sense here, because it really makes you think through how do you talk about these things, because that is part of what you need to acquire in this class is the ability to talk about code. Okay, so hopefully you got an example of that and I gave you a, another level of detail about at least one way to approach this. Okay, all right, talk to you later.